<laughs> hey everyone, it's demo time, and today we have Nick Vermundy of Spectro Cloud. And Nick, I believe you're going to show us what you call the Palette Dev Engine. Can you give us an explanation of that and take us on a little tour? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm very, uh, very happy to be there today for, for that demo. Uh, so Palette Dev Engine or PDE is um, a set of features in Spectral Cloud Palettes um, aimed for the developer experience and basically help them do two things. So first is provision virtual Kubernetes cluster from existing cluster in the palette environment. So I'm going to show you, you know, quickly how palette works first. But the idea in terms of the workflow would be that in, uh, platform engineers create, you know, cluster, deploy the cluster with palettes somewhere in the cloud or on-prem. Uh, and then out of that, they can uh, they give developers the ability to provision virtual cluster to deploy their application. So it's really two steps. Once the first step for the developer is to create a virtual cluster. So virtual cluster um, in Palette is uh, based on Loft V cluster, which guarantees the oh, yeah. isolation. Uh, you know. Um, so you use Loft. That's cool. Yeah, that's very cool. And I mean, for many reasons, but one, I mean, the two main reasons are one cost because it allows you to oversubscribe on your you know um, existing cluster. And second is, of course, isolation so that developers, you know, instead of using Kubernetes namespace, which we know is more like a soft um, isolation, they can use hard isolation with uh, virtual clusters. And then the second step for them is to deploy the application in their sandboxes. And for that, we, pre we, we provide this application profile, uh, which is based on the same concept of Palette profile, which is for defining your Kubernetes cluster, but this time for dev that help them define their application profile using Helm start contain. I mean, we're going to see it um, in a minute, but basically define the application in a declarative manner. And then they can then deploy this application in their sandboxes and, you know, code, change, deploy again, tests, all these kind of things. Soft isolation, that's a term. You don't hear a lot about, but I expect it's increasingly important, especially if you have multiple teams working on, you know, a Kubernetes environment. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is the whole, you know, I think multi-tenancy in, in Kubernetes, this is uh, a hot topic. And those are the two terms, soft or hard isolation, depending on what mm -hmm. you want to do, namespace may be enough, but there are a, a variety, I mean, a lot of different resources that are uh, scoped for the whole cluster, like custom resources definition, all these kind of things, they are valid for the whole cluster. So, you know, namespaces, isolation doesn't really work. Uh, and also, if you want to oversubscribe um, at scale, I think the cluster from Loft is, is great. So this is why we are using this. And uh, I think it can save a lot of cost. And then in terms of operation, of course, when you have multiple dev teams, uh, you have like maybe one large platform teams. You also need to to, to manage permissions, right? So who can use virtual cluster where? So we we also have the ability to associate, you know, all back to those uh, to those constructs in uh, in palettes. Uh, so this is yeah. the project overview. Uh, this is the platform admin view. So I'm going to start quickly by you know showing what is a cluster profile, which is of course the big foundation where virtual cluster would be then um, deployed from. So you can, you know, the, the premise of, of palettes for you um, is really to, I mean, for platform engineer, uh, is to decouple the cluster, you know, the, the, the cluster targets from its configuration. So, for example, here we have a uh, profile that is meant for Google, uh, Google Cloud. And what it does, actually, we are uh, crafting multiple layers, and every layer is really representing the layers that you will implement as you know in your Kubernetes cluster. So we start with the um, operating system, the Kubernetes version, CNI, uh, then things that may be specific to a particular cloud. And you can add more, you know, add on add-ons on top if you want to install other software on top of your cluster, like monitoring solution, 
uh, you know, infrastructure solution, all those kind of things. And then you can deploy this particular profile, create a new cluster, um, you have give it a name um, and select a cloud account, next, next, finished. And that's pretty much it, right? You can also like finally, you know, fine tune those different components. And then you're going to select the project in Google, the region, all that. I'm not going to go to the end, but it's just to give you a quick idea of how we decouple um, the cluster profile from the cluster themselves. If you want to, for example, uh, upgrade the version of Kubernetes, it's as easy as changing the version in the profile and then going into the cluster that has been deployed, you will get a notification validating that notification and then Kubernetes is going to be upgraded um, automatically for you. So as a result, you end up, once the, the, the cluster profile is deployed, then you end up with the, the cluster with all the metrics you can expect for, for day two operations. We provide some cost, of course, the profile, where it's coming from. You can see all the various you know, uh, workloads, deployment pods. You can also plan for uh, when you create the cluster for scanning um, con uh, con in terms of configuration security, pen testing, confirmant testing, SBOM. You can also have backups, all these kind of things uh, meant for day two operations. So Palette, originally like the Palette core provides you all these benefits in terms of deploying cluster using cluster API. So the technology we are using behind Palettes is cluster API and cluster API providers. So it's really like best of breed technology to manage the life cycle of Kubernetes cluster. But here we really implement it in a more user-friendly way. Um, also in such a way you can do it at scale. So that's for the foundation for the platform, right? So this is outside of PDE, this is Palette core. So now PDE or Palette Dev Engine really starts when, as a platform uh, engineer, you start creating a cluster group out of which then devs will be able to create virtual clusters. Uh, so here, this is the cluster group that we're going to use today. It's composed of my uh, GCP cluster. If, for example, I want to create a new one, I go there, for example, for my um, AWS cluster group, go there. I can add tag if I want. And then what I do, I just select, you know, like uh, the cluster I want to add within that cluster group. You have two choices. Either you can set up um, some, you know, virtual cluster configuration right now, or you can do after uh, the cluster group has been created. So um, you can also fine tune the vCluster configuration sets, of course, the over subscription, uh, the type of cluster endpoint you want, load balancer or ingress. And then, yeah, the virtual cluster limit you want for all the virtual cluster, you're going to be uh, provisioning within that uh, cluster group. The, so that will be the vi virtual cluster limit uh, you know, for every one of those virtual cluster. So Nick, so people who aren't doing this now, what are they going through to get to, you know, to be able to really accomplish uh, this day two, the day two requirements that are so much a part of managing Kubernetes cluster environment? I mean, the first thing is deploying Kubernetes in the cloud. You will use different mechanisms, right? So you can use KubeADM, you can use GKE, EKS, manage versus infrastructure as a service. And every cloud will have its own terminology, and way of deploying the cluster. Of course, you could use Terraform, but again, it's difficult to maintain at scale. Uh, it's not, I mean, we also have a Terraform provider you can use with, with Palette, but the, the premise of Palette is really for those these day two operations from deploying the cluster to managing the cluster to creating isolation and deploying application using the same methodology, the same language, and based off you know, open source uh, software that already exists, things like cluster API, uh, vCluster, except that now it's really meant for the enterprise to use for the enterprise with also the right level of support. And of course, all the innovation we bake into, into the, you know, the different project we're using, we, we, we also um, putting things uh, upstream, right? We're committing this upstream to various projects like, you know, cluster API provider or vCluster 
um, from Loft will contribute, of course, uh, upstream with this. And here with Spectro, you have everything that is combined, but still um, in, I would say, much more simplified with this notion of cluster profile in a UI fashion, repeatable fashion that you can just apply this configuration in any cloud anywhere, but still keep the same profile, whether it's for the cluster or for the application or for the virtual cluster. Um, I would say the key thing here is, or two things, is reusability and then scalability, right? And everything managed in a, a declarative fashion, right? So I guess if you use the open source project, you have the declarative fashion, but you don't necessarily have, you know, the scalability uh, and the repeatability, right? Over a different cloud and things like that. So does PDE get added into the cluster itself? How does it get integrated? Yeah, so let me show you. So now uh, we, base, we base everything out of this uh, cluster group, which is just have um, my GCP cluster. Um, and then, so that's it about the um, platform engineer view. The, the, the only thing you need to, go, to do to get access to PDE then is switch to app mode there. And then what we see now is much more uh, developer friendly, where you have two things. You will see virtual cluster. So here, the virtual cluster have already been created for actually my app. I've already de deployed the, um, the app for the demo, but we'll go through it anyway. But just to show you like the, the final results. Um, and then you have the app profile that the developer will model. And really the work starts there. So it's limited number of options and only what matters for a developer, which is what do I deploy my application and where do I deploy it in my virtual clusters? So the idea here is to um, so create an app profile. I'm going to show you first um, the that jokes profile, which is an app I've created for education purpose. I would say it's pretty much overkilled in the sense that there are a lot of different layers just to generate that jokes, uh, that jokes with um, the uh, open AI GPT-3 model. So the idea is to request a joke from the joke server. Then uh, you get a message that is sent to Nats, get picked up by the joke worker. The joke worker then um, contact the OpenAI API to generate that joke, store it in MongoDB, and cache it into Redis, right? That's <laughs> that's a lot of things just to generate that joke. But the purpose here is just to show you how first you can do it as microservices in Kubernetes, and here how you can easily model this with, uh, with PDE. So the idea here is like you st starting from a bottom up, you any environment variable can bubble up to the um, the services that are up the stack. So typically, the that joke uh, application will need information to store things in Redis, MongoDB, and NADS. So that means those layer needs to be at the bottom, right? So here, um, those MongoDB, Redis, NAT services are um, out of the box service. I'm going to show you just quickly after what are the options, but those are out of the box. So you don't have to specify container image. Uh, you can think about it as if you were using, um, you know, like Docker and, you know, you just want to uh, deploy the, the, the container, the Redis container, and that's it. So you just specify the, um, the container image and that's about it. Here, exactly the same. You specify Redis, you say, I want this as a password. And by default, this is what we're going to be exposing as envir environment variable. MongoDB, same thing, just specify the size. This is then what you will be uh, access, um, you know, what will be accessible from an environment variable perspective. Same thing with NATS. And then this is really your application, like the Go code I've created are basically, you know, residing into those two containers. So you can specify the container image, uh, the port you want to expose, and then reuse the environment variable from the lower layer, you know, Redis, MongoDB, NAT. And then same thing for the worker, specify my container image, uh, the environment variable I want to use. So here I've got, you know, a couple of other more like my OpenAI API key, um, things like that. And that's about it, right? Um, and so what you, what you really are focusing on is this reusability, really? Yeah, because I mean, that's, yeah. That's, a, that's a criticality for, 
for day two operations, really, is that reusability. And we got about five minutes left. So I would just love to, you know, yeah, uh, hear your thoughts on that and, and, and think through how we can, you know, really encapsulate things for folks here. Yeah. So this thing, you know, like, as I was saying quickly, this is what you, you get outside of the box in terms of re reusability. Your own code can be used for um, as container deployment. You can, if you have hem chart, you can use hem chart or just raw manifest. You have all those databases available, um, object storage, messaging system, security. And now the next step really is about uh, deploying. Um, you go there, click deploy, uh, and then you can choose uh, the virtual cluster you want to deploy into, right? Create app, and then the job is done. So what you get once the, so as I said, you click on deploy, you will end up with in, inside your host cluster. So this is my host cluster here. Uh, I just have one worker and one uh, control play node in Google as a infrastructure as a service. So no GKE, just uh, VMs or instances running in the cloud. As you hit this virtual cluster, you know, creation and app deployment, you can see here the application gets deployed every tier in its own namespace. And then you've got access to the service. And because we are running in Google, then you have access to the external IP of the joke server, which is where I'm going to request the joke. And then you can just use this and start testing your application. So here it's um, basically uh, generating dad jokes, which are not necessarily super funny, but it's just chat GPT, right? <laughs> That's basically it. Yeah, and then, of course, you can monitor your different applications, see there uh, what has been deployed, go back to your you know, developer view and reuse you know, those profiles across multiple clusters. If suddenly you want to move to staging, you just have to, to select same app profile, but a different cluster, different uh, virtual cluster, or you can create a virtual, virtual cluster as needed. And finally, we have another option, which may be interesting for people who want to test the future without having physical, I mean, without having cluster deployed with pallets. Um, if you choose to deploy the, here, this app profile, when you select deployment, you can say existing uh, uh, here in the, uh, no, it's not there. I can't remember what that is, but basically it allows you at some point to deploy um, in, a cluster that we maintain on AWS for developers. So meaning that you don't have to have any available Kubernetes cluster. You're just interested in de de uh, deploying your application. And we're going to take care of the hosting of that application in, in a virtual cluster in our own environment, meaning that you're not going to be using uh, pallets. That's more for people who don't have access to a Kubernetes cluster in their environment. OK. Okay. That's pretty cool. Um, I love that reusability uh, that you built into this. Um, so where can people learn more about uh, about PDE? So uh, if you want to check out PDE, you can just subscribe on our website. If you want to try, create a login, and uh, you can just try it. And as I said, you don't need um, anything to begin with because we can provide the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, and I mean, if you're dev, but if you're a platform engineer and want to see the different aspect of it, uh, both you know creating cluster and creating um, the the application profile, then you can start and have up to five cluster for free, right? So just register uh, with Palettes um, on um, console.spectrocloud.com, or you can check out our website, and then we'll have more information in documentation. Uh, we have white paper, blogs, and other type of resources. Nick, thank you so much for your time. Nick Vermundi of Spectro Cloud, thank you for the demo. We look forward to learning more as uh, PDE develops. Thanks for having me today. Really enjoy it. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.